This podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Your San Diego County Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Fix Auto. Corky's Pest Control. And Lolita's Family of Restaurants. Hey sports fans, welcome back to another LaxCast. I am Christian Pedersen, your host who knows nothing about lacrosse, and this is the, the man who knows everything about lacrosse, Santa Fe Christian head coach Tom DeMaio. Coach, I'm going to say something to you, and I want, I just, let's do a little word association. Okay. D1 Finals. Good game. <laughs> Let, let's go. Let's go. Scripps, La Jolla. I would be lying if I had, if I told you that I had any form of a bracket filled out with this championship game. Not to diminish it, though, because these are a team that was a D1 semifinalist last year and a team that was a D2 champion last year. So it's not that, oh my goodness, a nine seed and a 14 seed came through and snaked a bunch of bad games. These are still very talented teams. It's just proof of why you actually play the game. Yeah, and, and the, the, the two teams are total opposite spectrums. Where La Jolla started out the season great, Scripps started out the season with some really lopsided scores the other way. And if you know if we had predicted this, you know, five weeks into the season, I think we would have we would have laughed at it. But as the season went, has went on, these two teams have played each other. I think it's you know this is probably it probably makes sense as as you look at it and La Jolla La Jolla was playing the best going into the playoffs and they're they they are you know I guess you call it an upset they beat Westview who they beat earlier in the season triple overtime triple overtime and so uh so this this is a good matchup I think you know both teams have played each other already it's the third time and uh, anytime you have the third time you play and the, all the chips it's winner go home and the rings on the line it leads to uh leads to a lot of excitement you brought up a lot of interesting points I want to touch on Overtime being the first one. Both of these teams have played and won all of their overtime games this season. So that's a check in the, they're the exact same category. They split their two games that they played against each other. Scripps winning the first one, La Jolla winning the second one. They both won on their, uh, they both won on their opponent's turf, which is kind of interesting. So that to me completely says that if you play this at a neutral site, it doesn't give anyone any sort of advantage or take away any sort of advantage. Uh, it, you mentioned them both having opposite trajectories. They both went through very hot and very cold. Fa- it just seems like the, the, the Venn diagram starts getting more and more into just a circle of these being Basically, the same teams are just opposite sides of the same coin. Yeah, and they've been through this big ups, ups and downs. I mean, I know both coaches well, and I think at one point this season, I've texted both those coaches and said, "What happened?" Well, you know, in that game, just because the score was was nothing what I expected it would be one way or the other. So, um, I think you know that leads for. I think we could probably make a safe bet. This one's going in overtime. It's going to be a one goal game, oh, <laughs> one way or the don't other. Don't tease me with that. That would be a Amazing. Yep. Um, and just another point I always love to hit on in the playoffs because you you, you talk about it with with we were talking about it with the D two game and, and every single playoff game is experience versus exuberance. This game features two teams that have kind of had some postseason success the last two years. La Jolla winning the D two championship last year. Scripps they fell to you guys in the playoffs last year uh, in Division one. Where does that all, all, all fit into? Does anybody have an advantage there with La Jolla? You know, they, it's not D1, but they've been there and done that in terms of winning a title. Scripps, they're the school that's, well, we've been up in D1 for a while. We're the more established power up here. D- does any team have an edge there, or am I still just lost in the muck and there's just no way to figure this out? I- I, I think I think the latter is probably right. I don't think that I don't look at this and say one team particularly has an advantage because they've been there and, and um, you know you could argue that La Jolla has has the format down because they won the D two championship last year. But uh, Scripps is going to be hungry. But I, I think that because these guys have played each other a couple times, this sort of calms the nerves and makes it like all right, let's execute, uh, let's let's do what we didn't do when we had success, and let's do you know let's do what we did when we had success. So I think that. That's how this one plays out. I think it's because it's a third matchup. You sort of forget about even as much what's on the line, but executing. Are you making another series of adjustments? Are you flipping back just solely to what worked for the game that you won? Are you finding some sort of new approach? Just be like, well, they've seen everything of us for two games. Let's just let's go to a completely different. Let's switch to over to a zone defense. And I'll, are you making a bunch of changes? What's your mindset if you're the coach of either of these teams? I, I think. 
because of the short the short week, you know, you, you play Wednesday night and you're in the finals on Saturday, which means you really have a day of practice and a day of scout. Um, you, you're making minor adjustments to what you just simply had success with or what you didn't do well. It's, it should be two or three, four things. It's nothing. You're not going to recreate the wheel in a couple of days. So I think that's what you're going to see from both teams. Uh, and, and I think that I think it's going to be a close game. Like I said, I'm predicting overtime. You're predicting overtime. I'm predicting that it will not be overtime, but it will be decided in the last 30 seconds, something like that dramatic, just because I want to be able to move on to the, to the open yeah, division yeah. game after that. Um, Saturday at San Marcos at 5 p.m. Saturday at San Marcos at 5 p.m. Saturday, San Marcos 5. You have to say it a whole bunch so it actually gets into people's to people's memories. Just give me, you, you, I mean, pure into your crystal ball. What is going to be maybe the one kind of not publicly focused on X factor that could decide this game? Well, I, you know, I think that La Jolla, La Jolla has good goaltending. And then when you get in these kind of games, that is big and it, it always is and i think that's it's going to be on scripts to take good shots that, that don't result in turnovers and saves and you know not try to do too much so i think i think goaltending on the la jolla side is going to be the key to their success and i think scripts has to play fundamentally smart lacrosse and not not take bad shots all right sounds simple we'll see if it's simple for them to execute this saturday coach thank you very much fans thank you very much it has been a wonderful season we will see you one more time to reflect upon who our champions are and, and you know, throw, throw some confetti effects in there and, and celebrate them. Yeah. Maybe we'll give ourselves a trophy for a great season. Um, thank you very much. We will see you Saturday, 5 p.m. at San Marcos. I cannot stress it enough. Be there. It's going to be a great day of all three games, but this one will be no exception to the lineup. Thank you very much, sports fans.